167 for a 12 inch pipe. It's 1000 feet long. C is 120. So anyway, those are all the K values including the pipe number 4 which is the fourth pipe that I'm going to add in the second part of the problem. For the pipes 1, 2 and 3, they're all in series. So the equivalent pipe is the sum of all the Ks. That's K1, K2 and K3 gives me an equivalent KE of 7.164. And I'm going to use that KE in this head loss equation. Now remember the head loss, this has to be obtained from the Bernoulli equation. That Bernoulli equation is going to be applied from point A to point E. Now if you apply that equation, it will simply say the head loss from A to B, A to E is 200 feet. And that is basically an independently obtained from the Bernoulli equation. And then therefore, in order to solve for the flow, we simply use this equation. The head loss is equal to Ke q to the power 1.85, which is the equation that I told, showed you earlier for friction loss. And therefore, invert that equation to solve for q. In this case, it comes out to be 6.05 CFS. So it's so easy to calculate the flow rate given that head loss of 200 feet. Now I'm going to add, by the way, before I do this, go to the next part of the problem, I want to talk about this equivalent KE. This is called the equivalent pipe method, by the way. Very often, let's say you want to replace these three pipes with one single pipe, then all you have to do is consider this so-called the equivalent KE for those three pipes. Now that KE, by the way, has several terms in it. It has length in it, it has a C in it, and a pipe diameter in it. So there might be an extension to this problem or an additional question asking you what pipe would you select that has this equivalent KE. Well, in that case, you have to know the C value and you have to know the length of the pipe also. Uh, those have to be pre-specified because there are three unknowns in that equation. So typically what we would do is in replacing these three pipes, for example, I would probably take the total length of what we have there, all the three pipes, as my equivalent length LE. Also, since we're replacing the whole system with a new pipe, that C value will depend upon the type of pipe you're replacing it with. So that'll be your C equivalent pipe. And finally, the unknown, the only unknown will be the pipe diameter, DE, of the equivalent pipe. So that's what you're going to solve for. Okay, so that is a, a natural extension to this problem which I've not shown here, but they could ask you potentially. That's called the equivalent pipe method. You can do the same thing for parallel pipes also. Here I've had uh, showing you the application or use of the parallel pipe thing, application. In this case, we still have the three pipes in series, but there's a fourth pipe here added on that's in parallel to pipe number two. So in that case, what you want to do is first is to take these two parallel pipes and convert them into single pipe. And that KE is obtained by taking the reciprocal sum of the two pipes, two and four. Their K values are given right here. K2 is 4.852, and K4 is 19.697. And you take the reciprocal sum, you get a KE of 2.379. So therefore, this equivalent pipe now for those two parallel pipes is this, okay? This is essentially going to replace, <coughs> represents the same head loss as would transpire if the two pa parallel pipes are used. We're going to replace then the whole, once we get the parallel pipes replaced with a single pipe, that's essentially now we can re we recognize that we have one pipe number one and these pipe number, the equivalent pipe that I just got and pipe number three are in series. So we sum all their K values, and the total K equivalent of the entire system, in this case, 4.691. And therefore, the Q can easily be obtained is 7.6 CFS. Now, if you note, in the previous case, the flow rate was smaller. It was 6.05 CFS. There's a slight increase in the flow rate, primarily because of the fourth pipe you just added on in the system. Okay, so that's essentially demonstrates how to handle pipes in series or pipes in parallel in such problems. I've set up a small problem for you. You can work on this again. Uh, in this case, I do give you the K values in the problem, but these are all pipes in series. 
so that should make it fairly easy. The first question I'm asking you is to replace, uh, to calculate Ke for a single pipe to represent these three pipes in series, one, two, and three. Okay. And then, the, then I ask you for some additional information on the equivalent pipe itself, and finally the discharge from the reservoir. Okay. So you can go ahead and work on this. Uh, as per my example. It's kind of similar to what we just did. Finally, I will review this. I know this might seem a little complicated problem to solve, but it seems to be quite a popular exam on this, a popular question on this exam. It's what we call a branch pipe system. And what I'm going to show you is a method that's very quick and easy to work with. And typically what it involves is essentially the following things. Uh, <clears throat> they give you two reservoirs or three reservoirs interconnected by pipes, and they all meet at a junction. I call it here junction J. Typically, in a situation like this, we do not know the hydraulic head or the pressure at junction J. That's an internal point, and what, normally what we solve for is the hydraulic head at that junction J. In this problem, by the way, we have to re re recognize these are pipes. The velocity heads are small. So we're going to neglect any changes in velocity head. So all we're going to be working with is what we call the hydraulic head or the piezometric head, P over gamma plus zeta. Okay? And of course, we'll use the friction equation in this form, which I just talked about earlier. And uh, the problem is that the continuity equation can take on two forms depending on uh, which way the flow goes. For example, there are two possible scenarios. Reservoir A and B can combine to feed flow into reservoir C. So in that case, the flow coming in from pipe 1, pipe 2, add up to give you the total flow going out. Usually, that's from law of mass balance or equation of continuity. But as you will see, since we do not know what the pressure head is here, or the hydraulic head is at junction J, that's the unknown. Uh, it will depend on what we assume, so the flow balance may not be satisfied initially. But instead of doing trial and error, I'll show you a method that will give you the answer correctly. The true hydraulic head at junction J will be such that the flow coming in from these two reservoirs will be equal to flow going out into reservoir C. That's the equation of continuity is met. That's the first scenario, which is this one right here. The second scenario, I'm sorry, this is the first scenario, this is the second scenario where the reservoir B and A, a reservoir A is feeding into both the reservoir B and C. So the flow coming in out of this reservoir is going into either of these two reservoirs combined. So we'll, that will again depend upon the hydraulic head at junction J in this, in this particular problem. We're going to neglect the velocity head, as I pointed out to you. And J is an internal point. As I just said, the pressure is unknown. It will never be known. And that's not what we are interested in. We are only interested in the total hydraulic head. And let's uh, look at a problem, and that will elaborate this further. Uh, typically, here, I've given you three reservoirs. Reservoir 1, or I call it reservoir A, at a height of three, 30 meters from the datum. It's a free surface here, so the hydraulic head, P over gamma, is equal to 30 meters. Reservoir B is at an elevation of 18 meters and reservoir C at 9 meters. The question they're going to ask you is, what's the hydraulic head for this junction J? What should it be? That's what we have to solve for. Now, the way we do it is, of course, we'll have to do only two attempts, and then I'm going to introduce a graphical method that solves the whole problem. Uh, first, before we start, let's recognize a few things. For reservoir A, which is point 0.1 here, P1 over gamma plus Z1, is 30 meters. Same thing for reservoir B, which is basically this point, point 0.2 here. It's 18 meters. And reservoir C is finally 9 meters. Now, keep in mind that sometimes they give you an internal pressure in one of these elevated tanks with the pressure on top. In that case, use the pressure that they give you, P1 over gamma. Don't assume it's 0, OK? So just substitute whatever pressure that's given. So base bottom line is what you have to calculate is the hydraulic head. In this case, it just happens to be equal to Z1, Z2, and Z3. That's because these are reservoirs with free surfaces.
So the first thing we're going to do here's the solution. The first thing you do is calculate all the k values. That's in all hydraulic problems, pipe problems. This is the first step always. This is an SI unit, so I use the formula 10.7 length L divided by C to the power 1.85 and D to the power 4.87, all inconsistent units. In this case, K1 is 3.942, K2 is 30.552, K3 is 15.812. Now remember, you have to do this computation accurately because there's no way to verify these numbers, whether they're right or wrong. And once you got the K values, we are ready to solve the problem. What I suggest in step number two is just assume the hydraulic head at junction J initially. In this case, it doesn't matter what you assume. 20 meters, I start with that. That basically puts me between reservoir A, which is, remember, it's 30 meters. Reservoir B is at 18 meters. So this puts me between reservoirs 1 and 2. So basically, my continuity equation should say flow coming in out of reservoir 1 must go into flow going into reservoir 2 and 3 combined. Uh, let's see if that's true and how much we're off by that, by, by assuming this particular hydraulic junction head. So for example, in pipe number 1, the head loss will obviously be, if you apply the Bernoulli equation between 1 and the junction J, neglecting the velocity head. It's P over gamma plus Z, P1 over gamma plus Z1 minus P2, Pj over gamma plus Zj will give you 10 meters head loss. And that's expected because the total head at A is 30. The total head at junction J, the assumed one, is 20. The difference is 10. And that has got to be equal to the head loss. So that's how you apply the Bernoulli equation to get that head loss. And once you know the head loss, you can cal calculate the flow, obviously. Before I do that, I also do that for reservoir 2, for pipe number 2 here, and pipe number 3 also. And there are the values, 2 meters head loss for pipe number 2, and 11 meters for pipe number 3, which is from flow from J to C, reservoir C. Once I get those uh, head losses, I can calculate the flows. For example, the flow in pipe 1 is the head loss of 10 meters divided by the K value for that pipe, and then invert it. This is using the kq to the power of 1.85 equation. I solve for q. In this case, it is 1.654 meter cube per second. Do the same thing for pipe number 2 and 3. Now keep in mind, as I go along, I label them. This is the inflow into the junction. These two are outflows. If you remember, I assume the hydraulic head for junction J above reservoir number 2. So therefore, the flow has to go from the junction into the reservoir number two. And that's why it's an outflow. Anyway, the difference between the two inflows and outflows is I call the deficit. In this case, there's a 0 0.604 meter cube per, per second of positive deficit, which means I assume basically more inflow coming in and more or less outflow going out. Don't worry about it at this point. What you do is move on, just call it delta one, the deficit. And then may do one more assumption. In this case, you repeat all the steps we just did for another uh, hydraulic head at junction J. In this case, let's say 15 meters. And if you do 15 meters, head loss in pipe number one will be <coughs> essentially repeating the same steps, 30 minus 15. And that will give 15 meters head loss. Once again, remember, assuming this at 15 meters, that's the hydraulic at its junction. Remember, reservoir B is at 18. So therefore, in this case, the flow from reservoir A and B is feeding into reservoir C. So when I calculate the flows, I will show you uh, how to handle that part. But in this case, let's do the head losses first. Head loss in pipe number 1 is 15 meters, 3 in 2, and 6 in pipe number 3. And that comes from directly from the assumed hydraulic head at junction J, which is of 15 meters. Now, then you calculate the flows like we did before. Q1 is 2.059. That's an inflow. So is Q2. Remember, we assumed the hydraulic head at junction J, 15 meters to be below reservoir B. So the flow has to come out of reservoir B. That's basically what we call inflow into junction J. So those first two are the inflows. The last